Um, as I've uh, already mentioned, um, if you've got two static member classes that are uh, um, nested in the same top level class, um, they can actually um, access um, each other's fields and uh, methods even if they're private. And um, in that case, of course, the compiler will insert access methods to uh, allow that access to take place. And uh, this is what happens. Uh, is the uh, outer class there and um, a couple of inner classes there. Um, uh, I've made both of them private and, um, and there's a private int in there and uh, this one here is going to take a reference to that and it's going to need a reference because it's um, um, a static um, class um, so the only way to get it something in there is with a reference of some sort and uh, all it does is just increment it and um, this is how it's going to be translated by the compiler. It will effectively turn into this piece of code. First of all, um, outer has got nothing in it, as you can see. Well, um, I know it's got nothing. In fact, um, there is actually enough information retained somewhere or other in the system to ensure that you can't write something like outer.in1 or outer.in2 because both of these classes are private. So. I know it doesn't have any code or anything there. There is enough information is going to have to be retained by the compiler to prevent that from happening. Uh, then we've got um, the uh, class uh, in one, which is there, and um, that's going to need an access method for i because it's, that method is accessed by in two. Uh, of course, you only get access methods for accesses which actually take place. If there was no access to i, you can put that access method in. So here we go then. Um, it's static of course because access methods are always static and um, it returns i because auto increment can return as well, return a value. It doesn't happen to be used in this case but it could do. Um, and what we do is um, it's going to need a reference to the um, instance of the class of course and uh, it just does that increment like that. And um, outer dollar uh, in two um, is the one that's actually going to call it, which um, uh, just um, takes that uh, reference to the outer dot uh, in one there and uh, calls the access method like that, and uh, passing in in of course, which is the reference to the uh, class, and it's course being a static method you just use the class name naturally and uh, that's how it's done now um, uh, you might wonder a bit about nested classes why are they all so useful well um, uh, typically and the reason they get used a lot in things like um, uh, swing is um, uh, for this reason basically um, supposing you've got um, um, a button somewhere these things are called J button actually in Swing, and, um, uh, and when you click on that button, this graphical button, you want to you want to cause some computation or something to be done. Now, if this outer class here has gone and defined a, a button or something, and um, it, uh, the Swing package is a, a separate package, of course, um, then what happens is when you when the um, when the button is pressed, what happens is you want to cause a whole lot of code inside this class to run. Now, you that that code in there is going to be end up being called from the swing class in a different package. And what you don't want to do is to make all this code in here public because then anything could call it. You don't have absolute chaos. You want to keep it as private. And so what what they do is um, they define something called they define this interface, which is called um, um, it's called uh, um, action listener. <laughs> right. And this is a, a common interface that's used by a lot of components. And it's only got one method in it. It's called action performed. And what you do is you uh, define a, uh, an inner class, which is a, a subclass of action listener, 
and uh, this action performed method does all the action that you want to do. Okay, and you can keep that inside the class. You don't have to care it's private. You don't have to care it's public. And um, once you've got this class inside here, which um, subclass is the which um, um, implements rather the um, action listener, there is also in the um, in the uh, uh, for a, a button um, something called um, add action listener, which enables you to to supply the button with that uh, with a class that implements that interface. So the um, the button, of course, when you click the button, um, it goes and and looks at the um, at this uh, action listener thing, this object that implements an act action listener, and goes and calls the action performed method. And of course that triggers the code to run in here. And all of that has been done without having to expose all the internal workings of this class. And that's, that's the reason they're so useful. Now the proper area for this discussion is really um, um, design patterns. So I don't want to go into too much detail, but uh, that's basically why they're so useful. Uh, now let's have a look at um, hiding fields and methods. Um, now if a, a field um, in an enclosing class has got the same name as an inherited field, uh, the inherited field will shadow the field in the enclosing class. And so by default then the inherited field will be used. And the same applies to two override equivalent methods. So in both cases it's going to be the inherited one that it goes for, not the one in the enclosing class. So here's an example of that. We've got um, I there and um, N. And uh, in the that's an external class there, and in outer we've got I and N. And this inner class here extends the XT. Okay, so it's got there are two versions of this, and inside here it's the inherited ones that will be will have the priority. So they're they're going to be used by default. Is this external class here called test, and um, it's going to call outer dot inner dot m, which is that there. And so what happens is. Um, it prints out i, and the i that it prints out will be 99 because it will go for the inherited one, and the n, the n that gets printed out will be that one which says in ext. So that's what will print out. And if we look at this, um, outer dot inner n, um, that will print out uh, the inherited version in inner, so it will print out in ext. And if that wasn't there, it will not even look for an enclosed version. Because uh, looking for an enclosed version is something that inner classes do, not classes that are on the outside like this one. So basically it had better be there or you'll get a compile error. Okay, now um, that's about it I think for um, um, static member classes. Um, it's quite a bit that's been covered here and um, uh, quite a lot also that you won't find in any textbooks because they're not often mentioned. All these access methods and things are um, they don't go into that basically. But if you want to understand what you can and can't do, it's helpful sometimes if you if you look at um, uh, access methods and um, how the how the class is, is transformed and you can see that uh, this inner class is just pulled out and treated basically as a separate class uh, with the odd access method stuck in here and there to allow access between the inner and outer and that's basically what it does and if you understand that you can you can then start to see them just as ordinary classes uh, the next thing we're going to discuss is um, uh, non-static member classes which are a bit different uh, but uh, yeah, that's about it.